Hello, hello, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. And uh, last time, if you don't remember, we are going out drinking. And <laughs> this might end very bad. And uh, we are now, as you can see, we are out on the town searching for a bar where to drink and maybe flirt with some more dads. <laughs> That's why I even doing this, oh my god. And you didn't see this, but before this, I saw the world's best dad tip. That's so typical. Dad tip number 56. To go ask your mother. <clears throat> yes. Let's go this way. Whew, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really? In the distance, could it be... Jim and Kim's a big burnout neon sign hangs about the tiny, about, about tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, I'll do it. This bar bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of the pool ball sounds in the back as if patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at a bar. What? What'll be? Won't be a police. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Oh, okay. Uh, I know how to do. <sighs> no, I'm not drinking beer. It's just water, unfortunately. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. <laughs> oh. I awkwardly turn turn my attention to the game, which is playing on the game on the TV is on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my, my team of preference is not only playing but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. Alright, so this is how we're gonna do it. It's not like we don't know what know what the game is, whatever it is. Brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. What the fuck is this? Several people in the bar are wearing the distincting colors of the team I dislike. Although I believe from the, their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Hey. Oh uh, boy. Well, a middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably comfortably close to me. How do I do a women's voice? Hey, sailor! <laughs> Let's roll with that. Oh, hello. Mm. Mary. Good to see a refresh. See fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. <laughs> Let's roll it! Oh no, I actually just moved it to this part of town today. I'm Sven, by the way. Oh no, I remember Sven Good Looking, that's my name. Fuck. Ah. Are you watching the game? Yeah. My, <laughs> my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh, oh I love that team. And also, I love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Jesus Christ, I shouldn't have taken the Steam friendly stuff. Or is this just how it is? I get the impression that she's a little dry. Um. Hmm? Buy a gal a drink. <laughs> Why not? Buy her a drink. I'm almost, almost reluctant to signal the bartender and order Mary the glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary. They are clearly friends and this isn't clearly her first time doing this. She chips a glass at me. I suppose I gotta keep you company now. Hey. So what do you want to know? Uh, uh, they're really tossing those balls around, huh? Is this just innuendos and innuendos and innuendos? Um, huh? I wasn't really paying attention. I just saw a solid ball joke and went for it. That's respectable. So what else can you tell me about this part of mm. It's quiet, that's for sure. 
It's a very idyllic little life but <laughs> white picket fence is this place to do it. But every town has its secrets, you know. She takes a sip of her drink. That was a little ominous ominous for my taste. She leans closer. Hey. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Oh boy. Ah, uh, maybe some other time. Come on. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the news bar patron to enter. I happily watched the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in the term of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear a firm motive grunt from another man at the bar. Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I, I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. What the hell is this? Stream. I should never put on safe streaming. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win loss record, I'd say that. I, I said my team is superior. That's very wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass of the man drinking whiskey. He raises his head in response, and unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey, the man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Swen. I... I... Oh, he's having that kind of voice. I... Should... Oh, yes. You must be new here, may I all... You must be new here. May Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Mm. Rob... Robert chuckles. Oh. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better style spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a, a Jim or Kim that runs this hey. place? No, that'd be Neil. <laughs> no, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Hey. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh -huh. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? But beer, but I'll drink most things. Oh. Luck shots. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I like shots. Huh. Thank you. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Huh. Here's to your health. You take the shots, the whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. You don't. Drink whiskey like you're shooting whiskey like. No, why do you shot whiskey? You no, don't you should drink it in a glass. No, no. Hey. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, so when this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll, we'll, we'll be pals in no time. Why not? Yeah, um, he has a cool, colors, rugged, good looks. Compliment his hand tattoo. I like your tattoo. What does it mean? It's oh, oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> it's a reminder. Wait for him to elaborate. But since he's done talking, man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Oh. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals the bartender for another round. What are, what are you doing here at night? Let's do that. Well, not like forever, she was having a sleepover with her friends. Huh. Family type, huh? Single dad. Hmm. <laughs> he gets up. <laughs> Be right back, got a bout in my nose. Ne never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha, <laughs> I guess so. 
I, I gotta admit that Robert has some gruff charm to him. It's a guy that, guy like that, thinks I'm cool. Uh, really nice. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. Oh. I live in the cool de sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Hey. Great place to be. Good neighbors as well. Some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. Mm. I don't kiss and tell, word. Mm. So are we doing this or what? 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 Hey. You know, do you want to come inside or not? Oh! Oh, shit! <laughs> Okay. Fuck. We are going for this. Okay, let's go for the gruff and sexy guy. Smile and nod. Let's do it. Are you flirting? Follow me up his door. He fumbles with his keys and a second the door knocks, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind him, pushes me against the wall, kisses me, grabs my hips. Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me upstairs into what I assume is his bedroom. It's so dark I couldn't see anything. But Robert's intense expression. Oh my god! I'm blushing it! No! Shit! He kisses me again. I can hear him ch chucking off his jacket. I clumsily take off mine to his hands, roll him to my chest, and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, I, I don't normally do this. Do you want me to stop? This was. Hmm. How much have we recorded today? Yeah, like, like, <laughs> let's take a, let's take a vote, shall we? <laughs> Shit! Let's <laughs> just roll with it. Actually, I should probably get going. Rob steps back. Uh, all right. I think I'm gonna head home. Sorry. Nah, it, it's cool. I heard, oh, my head is still spinning with anxiety of turning the orbit down. Did I say no? Oh, the sight of the couch helps me co compartmentalize. Though, uh, compartmentalize. Though, I before I know it, I'm having it's. Uh, I'm having dreams about my teeth falling out. Yeah, it's okay if you don't come in first. Just make sure. Uh. I might get a text from an unknown number. Craig. Oh, I'm flirting with Craig too. So we have Robert, we have Craig. Rise. What's the matter? Rise, rise and shine, early bird. You still want to go work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy oh, crap, 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? We don't really say I drift back to sleep. Whoops, I must wink back out. Check my phone again. Hey, bud. Still want to uh, get your swall on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit dummy up. God, the last thing I want to do is work out, but it's great. I do want to catch up. Go to the gym. Ah, hey. Hey, my man. I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. Okay, so now we're flirting with Craig. I switch my and my bow's creak. I got to stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket. Hey, what? I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Is it Amanda or is it someone <coughs> else? Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I'm reluctant to brush my teeth, throw the only clothes I own that are even a kind of gym appropriate, and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and s serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and grass is still white with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. Out. I spot Craig standing out in front, stretching. Of course, he spots me and waves enthusiastically. Oh. Oh. Hey bro, good morning. Hey, good to see you man. I'm definitely not as pumped as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. Mm. You ready to kick some butt? Uh, with your help I am. I get, a, I get this feeling this is gonna be the less of me kicking butt and more the gym kicking my butt. But I can have that with you there. Oh. Dude, bro, that means a lot. <laughs> I'm blushing it. I could. 
<coughs> I need some water. Bro. Bro. Yeah, bro. We head into gym, and I immediately and I'm immediately intimidated. All these people look like they could break me in half. And it seems like Craig is friends with all of them. Mm -hmm. He firefights uh, uh, fires and finger guns all of the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Mm -hmm. Go on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be walking. So, I know we are on the treadmills. Oh. Yeah. And those over there are ellipticals. Hmm. Very good. What is this all other stuff? <laughs> Craig laughs. So I'm flirting with Craig, Craig now. Bro. They might look a bit scared, but I, I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in muscle tea flexes a, mu a muscle. I don't know, didn't know it existed on a machine. I think, I think it was once used to process grain into flour. <laughs> what is that? What's that guy doing that to himself? Hmm. That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Pray to some. Pray to some sort of game, you know, using medieval. That's probably. There's a tiny man in there, right? And he did something that the court found unfavorable, and now the muscular dude is dueling, dueling out justice in the form of pain. Hi. What? Hmm. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. Oh, uh, how long do you have been doing the buff thing? Oh. Couple of years. What do you, uh, what do you do when you're not dadding or working on or buffing? Oh. <laughs> I, I coach my twin softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Hmm. Ah, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Uh, try to my closest. So Jimmy Buffett song is I check out my hotbot. Love learning. I just said to get myself about the world on me. I like to sponge for knowledge. So I can to continue, you know, history is more Oh. So you watched it like the Hindu cha channel too, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, we're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Cray, who hasn't even broken sweat. How is he doing this so effortless? I'm dying, I can't even life force draining through every orifice of my body. Hmm. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? Huff, no. I don't like this story. Oh my god, he's really bumping out the speed, I guess what did I do to do? Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. Oh. And we were at a party, you woe to me to make me feel better. You tell me to create a distraction, so of course. I do a sick leg stand and get everyone cheering. And then I huff. I try to steal a fish from my fish tank at a party with my bare hands like an idiot. Hey! And then you drop the fish and, we, and it's flopping around with panic, so you run up to me post cake stand with a dying dirty fish in your hands that you scooped off the ground and you're yelling at me that you have to leave. Hey! <laughs> so I'm running off of, out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth to mouth. <laughs> Research. Resuscitation, resuscitation, and we get him uh, home and get him into a ball of water, but the prognosis was grim. And the next day he is uh, alive and well. Hey! I never did uh, catch the great fish thieves of the Grand Ridge U. And they never huff uh, well. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hey. hurt. Dude, bro, okay? Craig offers my hand, looks over uh, me, uh, me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and my, rub my back. This doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. Oh man! You, do, you don't push yourself like that. I always know your limit, bro. Well, I think I might call our game gym adventure here. Oh. You sure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, here, bro. I brought you this. Craig hands me about a shaky full of thickly green naked. I stayed a bit, that must be apparent distaste. Mm -hmm. Is a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here he goes. He smells it. It's actually delicious. Wow, this really is good. This is really good. Bro. Good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Bro. 
Maybe no, if you ever want to work out again, maybe you can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. It was a pun intended, you bastard. You fucking bastard. Good one. Well, I'm gonna put on some eyes on this. Everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling a shame. Craig used to order the used to order the delivery pizza from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now we can run circles around me. Literally, man. I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have been falling asleep. I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be a man at school in fi uh, five minutes. I'm frantically put on some clothing, apply a generous amount of deodorant and run out the door. Tip, everyone, everybody, everyone needs to know how to use power tools. <laughs> I arrive at the man at school and check in on the at the front desk. They gave me a bright orange visitor stick and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling a pretty the haggard, but hopefully but nobody will notice. I check my watch and uh, relieve this young woman two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 1? I spot a youth standing at his locker, approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know Mr. Vega? Where Mr. Vega classroom is? The youth turns around, looks at me with a heavily light eyes. Youth. Uh, come on, I'm late. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine, up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back to that, that punk sent me off a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind. When I suddenly uh, head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh! Lucian, you don't have a period to get you? You don't have a third period to get to? Hugo. Wow, wow, wow. I think I know who I'm gonna flirt with next. <sighs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Oh! Wow! No, I'm officially 10 minutes later. I glare at Nancy walks away. We're not. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be Sven. This period is almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Ah! Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of my the comedically small students' desk in the back. I might get stuck. I might st get stuck in this. Oh! All right. Very, very, very. Now, who can tell me about the reliability of a narrator in J.D. Sanding a catcher in the Rhine? Oh! Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm? The whole class erupts in laughter. Oh! All right. All right, everybody. Very funny. Colin, please sit down. Oh! No. Holden Clawfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings and all the students immediately get up and make a break for them. Remember to do the reading and answer the response on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody, nobody's listening. Hmm? On none, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Um, Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Hmm. Both, you know. Budget cuts. Right. Hmm? Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Oh. Please call me Hugo. Hmm. I don't normally do this impromptu parent teacher meeting, but as I am sure you know, Amanda is a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Eh. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, so she has been falling hard. She's not letting. She's not completing assignment and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally told chalk. I normally, I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda almost had shared anything with me. That hadn't even crossed my mind. That something we might be. Eh. I just wanted to ask you: Is everything okay at home? We, we just, we just, well, we just moved recently. It was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Oh. See if you, see if you can talk to her about it. Eh? I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. 
I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thank you for letting me know, Hugo. Ah! Anytime. Oh, my man, let's stop. Think for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Oh. Yes? Yes? Did yeah, ever catch to that, right? <laughs> oh. oh. Yes. Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out of school. I'm still a little bit in a shock that Amanda was a bit able to hide this well so from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we've lost her mother. Amanda must have done been done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up in a carpool and Amanda hops into the passenger seat. And you know what? I feel like we can end this episode here. Alright? And we will talk with Amanda in the next turn and see what's really going on here. And until that time, to the loop.